what the carnivores eat. We're gonna get a little non-traditional today. Now, I know you've had scalloped potatoes, and I know you've had broccoli and cheese, but what we're gonna make today is scalloped broccoli and cheese. Um, we're gonna start out with, this is frozen broccoli. Now, you can get fresh broccoli, and the recipe's gonna be pretty much the same. But I like to use frozen broccoli, it cooks a little faster in the oven. And on top of that, if you don't want to eat it right away, it keeps a little bit better. So what you're going to want to start out with is you want to pour your broccoli and cauliflower in a bigger bowl. Get all the little food nuggets in there. And then you're going to cut half an onion. What I like to do with my onions is I like to strip them down first. It's easier to work with the naked onion. And just to try to work around the peel. Um, cut it right down the middle, and then you want to set it up. Easiest if you cut an onion right down the middle between the belly buttons, like so. It'll give you the kind of rings that you would get on a burger. Now you don't want to chop them too small. When you bake something like this, the process of baking is going to cause the onions to dissolve partially and you're going to lose some of that onion texture. So you don't want to cut them too little. And you're going to want to put two to three tablespoons of minced garlic in here. And Monterey Jack cheddar cheese. You really can't go wrong. I have literally a bag of each, but you don't have to put that much. You can always surprise with half a bag. Um, now, you're going to also have two more ingredients. It's going to be the cream and the butter. But you want to put those on last. So what we're going to do next is we're going to season this whole spread. With these three seasonings. This is dash. This is a five, pop, five pepper, five salt seasoning. And this one is called Nature Season, which is actually my personal favorite. Now, after you put the seasoning in, you kind of want to try to toss things around a little bit before you add it. What you're actually looking for is you want to see the speckles of seasoning on the vegetables. That way you'll know that you have it. I don't have enough. So I'm going to add just a little bit more of this one. It's not as strong as salt, so you don't have to worry about it getting too salty as quickly. Okay, and then the very next and last, or second to last ingredient is going to be, this is half and half, um, and you're going to want to pour about two cups, maybe one and a half. I'm going to fold it all together. Now, what you're going to do before you pour it, set this off to the side, take out your stick of water. This is going to be able to do. And, That'll make it easier for me to work. Now, 
Now I pre-grease this pan. I prefer to use canola over vegetable oil. It's got a little bit lighter um, texture, a little less flavor, and I don't need guests in at my food if I have no flavor. And so the next thing you're gonna wanna do is pour it into a baking pan. And you want it to look a little watery, get a little thick. Just like this, and that will be fine. 
Um, I prefer to break mine down into sections. And usually I put my hand in, I use all four of my fingers to judge how long the lay is supposed to be. So you want to get down in there good. And since this is skin on, because that maintains the most flavor for a salmon, you want to make sure that you cut through the skin. So you want to get a sweet treat to add with it. Um, you can do cooked apple. I always choose a sweet potato. Now, you want to make sure that it's wet when you wrap it up in the foil, which will help it steam and cook faster. And then you just roll it back to lunch. And there we go. And isn't that beautiful? Thank you for watching Cooking and Shit. And if you want to see anything else about our productions, check out our YouTube channel and our website. Thank you, and tune in again.